Okay, welcome. Uh, very much in the news at the moment is the issue about firms cutting costs, cutting wages or cutting pensions. And this is something which is often reported as you know, a case of them just surviving, how they're going to maintain their profit margins. But what we can learn from economics, starting at the AS level and then going on to A2, is getting a bit more of a critical insight as to why this is happening. You know, what assumptions are being made in the wider economy? Now, you should be familiar already with why we may be in this current position, that we had the global credit crunch, and this meant that in terms of consumption, we saw those levels fall as, as banks were unwilling to lend to consumers and households, and on top of that, we've seen the government spending cuts. So we've seen already aggregate demand move from this kind of full employment uh, on the productive possibility frontier, all resources fully employed, sort of around here. We've seen that move in this direction. And of course, if it goes beyond six months, that movement is, is what we're calling recession. What happens next is that um, essentially, in the free market view, workers have a choice. And if they're going to be rational, the free marketeers believe that rather than accept this scenario continuing, becoming unemployed, they will instead be prepared to accept wage cuts. And of course, what we've also got is the cuts for companies in terms of pensions, for example. And again, what you should be able to know is that if we're talking about cuts in the cost of production, and this is what firms are doing nationally, then we should see the short run aggregate supply curve moving outwards to the right. Now, one of the key things you've got to convince people about is what does that mean? So if we see here, this is the SRS, shifting out to SRS2, it looks nice as a diagram. You'll then must really say, okay, so this is the general price level, that's lower, we go P1 to P2. And you'd also say, here comes the recovery. If it's more than three months, it's recovery. If it goes beyond that, we know we've got maybe more genuine growth, going up to Y2. But you need to explain to people in a common sense language as to what does this practically mean. You know, it's a pretty diagram. What we're saying is obviously, as firms cut their cost of production, then they might be more in a position to be able to cut their prices. It's not true that all firms will be cutting prices. Some might be increasing their prices, maybe just not as much as they were before, to maintain their profitability. But in general, we'll see the average price level, those inflationary pressures, come down. We'll see, we can call it lower cost push inflationary pressures. In addition, firms might say, now also we're in a position to be able to expand. We have cheaper labour, maybe more companies will start up, maybe companies will relocate to Britain with those lower cost of production. So again, we'd see this movement from Y1 to Y2, thus the economy expanding. What you have to say to yourself is, it sounds good in theory, but is that what is happening in reality? We've gone, start of 2012, over a year of private companies having wage freezes, which in real terms means a cut in their real costs. But are we seeing signs of recovery? Whatever you are at this point in time watching this, you'll have better evidence than I as to whether this is the case.